Brother Morris, Sister Morris' son, passed away this week. And we want to thank God for their life that they live and for the service. Thank you so much. Our lesson theme is God's unfailing love. Lesson focus is the actions of the wise flow out of the living faith. I like that. The actions of the wise flow out of a living faith. In other words, you have faith, your, your faith is going to cause something to happen, to happen right? So we thank God for that. <clears throat> and our topic for this lesson is faith without works is faith. And you'll be able to read and touch upon the scriptures, James chapter 2, verse 14 through 26. I'm going to give the old view, a few points from the old view. One is talk about a visible commitment. A visible commitment. Those who have a saving faith are being transformed by the Holy Spirit. I think everybody ought to believe that and realize that. They are thinking and acting like Jesus. Some of us have these little signs and things going on with what Jesus do. And that's what we do. We do what Jesus would do. James considered it impossible to declare saving faith in Christ, but then publicly behave in a totally opposite way. You can't say I'm a Christian. They behave like a heathen. That makes sense? The new Jewish believers had to change their assumptions within their culture once they became Christians. Their emphasis was no longer obeying rules to please God. They did not want to that care about pleasing God. James said, if you are a follower of Christ, your behavior will reflect your commitment. So James offered an example of authentic saving faith versus superficial faith. If an impoverished person entered a Christian gathering hungry and wearing ragged clothes, but the congregation ignored the person's need. That's an example of dead faith. It shows this church has no Christ-like qualities, and they wave the person off saying, hope you get your needs met somewhere. God bless you and refuse to give actual help. That is hypocritical, isn't that right? Amen. The demons know Jesus. James continues to speak about superficial faith by pointing to the demonic hopes. They recognize who Jesus is, and they can say they believe in God. Yet, this acknowledgement does not save them. Saving faith is shown through godly, loving actions. To say, to talk, but not act, is a different thing. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. This lesson gives two examples of faith. I thought it was very good examples. James used two Old Testament characters to give an example of living faith. Abraham listened to God's instructions and took measures to sacrifice Isaac. That's a great uh, sharing of faith there because anybody know how long it took Abraham to even have Jacob? Yeah. Almost uh, 100 years old, yeah. amen, before he could even have a child, he even got notice of a child, amen, he had given up this. So now, amen, when God shares with him to sacrifice his son, most of us would have a problem with that. All right. But Abraham did not forget that who gave him that son and how, what kind of trials he went through to have that son. Mm -hmm. He knew this was the son ident identified in God's covenant, but he believed that Heavenly Father would somehow work this all out. And you got to believe that God will work it out. The Lord did after seeing great faith on the part of Abraham, the prostitute, amen, Rahab and Jericho believed the report about the power of Israel's God. She put her faith into action by hiding the Israelite spies and helping them escape. So that's another say about the, about the, amen, the prostitute Rahab. You know that our lineage, amen, comes from that, that share, amen. amen. Faith lived out. A church girl who claimed to follow Christ but simply mouths, prayers, and Bible verses without a sincere commitment has not demonstrated saving faith. He or she cannot say with the people, with the Apostle Paul, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. That is the will of God. The Lord bless the reason give us the spirit and the share of this teaching day. I pray that you will help. Thank you. Amen.
praise God from whom all blessings flow. Yes, sir. Jesus will certainly work, work it out. out. Right. Yeah. We're glad to be Woo. in the house of the Lord. Amen. One more time. Amen. Amen. To hear, hear the praises of his people. Yes, and Lord. we're just glad to be yes, here today. Yes, Lord. There's a game we come with no new message. The wages of sin are still dead, right. but the gift of God is still eternal life. Would it be please if you would go with us to 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter. 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 4 and ending at verse 13. 1 Samuel 16. 4 through 13. The grass wither, the flower faded, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. 1 Samuel 16, the 4th through the 13th verses. 1 Samuel 16, 4 through 13. Amen. Amen. So Samuel did what the Lord said and came to Bethlehem and the elders of the city came trembling to meet him and said, do you come in peace? And he said, in peace I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. He also consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they entered, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look at his appearance or at the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For God sees not as man sees. For man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Yes, then Jesse called Abinadab and made him to pass before Samuel. And he said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Mm. Next, Jesse made Shammah pass by and said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. And Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. But Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen these. And Samuel said to Jesse, Are these all the children? And he says, That remain is yet the youngest. And behold, he is tending sheep. Mm -hmm. Then Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. So he brought, so he sent and brought him in, for he was ready mm -hmm. with beautiful eyes mm -hmm. and a handsome appearance. And the Lord said, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. And then Samuel took the horn, the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. And Samuel rose and went to Ramah. Turn to your neighbor and say, Neighbor. Neighbor. Pastor Joseph needs your prayer. Pastor Joseph needs your prayer. And your amen. Amen. Today's sermon topic is. Today's sermon topic is. Rescue me. Rescue me. Rescue me. Rescue me. Yeah. I was working on this particular sermon because I was trying to reach the young people about God's anointing, about how God has a purpose and a plan for your life no matter what your circumstances are in life. And as I was working on what the Lord had given me, uh, something popped up. I was watching, uh, again, uh, Facebook Live, uh, watching Westside Baptist Church. Uh, Dr. Delvin Atchison, one of God's great communicators of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And a young child came on and she began to sing. And she began to sing a song by Laura Diggle, and I had never heard it. And for me, it was as if God was speaking into my spirit 
and into my sermon. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. one of the things, it starts to say, you are not hidden. There's never been a moment you are not forgotten. Yeah. You are not hopeless, though you have been broken, your innocence stolen. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS. I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true, I will rescue you. There is no distance that cannot be covered over and over. You are not defenseless. I'll be your shelter. I'll be your armor. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear your SOS. They said, I will send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It is true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight. It's true. I will rescue you. I hear you whisper underneath your breath. I hear you whisper, you have nothing left. I'll send out an army to find you in the middle of the darkest night. It's true. I will rescue you. I will never stop marching to reach you in the middle of the hardest fight, it is true, I will rescue you. Oh, I will rescue you. Many times, this sermon has been preached from the perspective of the anointing of David and how he was preferred among all of his brothers. But many times, we, we miss that God knew Exactly where David was. And exactly what David was going through. God saw him where he is. I believe that many young people, many teens, many young adults, many children struggle with the question, where was God in my past when I was being hurt or I was being wounded? Because if we were to be honest with ourselves, about 60% of our adult problems are tied to our childhood issues. Well, you and my father was angrily talking to my mother, and I felt helpless, and I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to defend it. Where were you when the divorce happened? And now, again, they're on different sides of the fence, and I don't know what side to take. And I'm blaming myself that maybe it could be me, or maybe there was something in my past that was well, 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 seen as though it was hurting, or seen as though God was not there. He did not care. And the question is, where is God? So we're looking at the text. We're looking at the text that, that, that Saul had been disqualified because he, he, he did not listen to the voice of God. And God is saying, I, I, I'm going to bring you a new king out of Bethlehem. Oh, that ought to ring. That ought to ring to some people, a king out of Bethlehem. We went to say that to the <laughs> And so he, he goes here, and what, what, what he sees is, he, he goes to the house of Jesse, and Jesse has eight sons. That's come on, messed up my message. <laughs> it's been all, because I had all day and night, and he threw a little monkey wrench in the eye. And here you have a man with eight sons, but one is not even considered, or not even called by name. One is, is, is not even invited to the party. Oh, y'all not telling me. One is not even considered on the list. Now, yeah. And the, the, this is for all of you that, 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 that had to go through the JV route. You know, you didn't make varsity your first year. You had, to, you had to be on the freshman team. You had to work your way up. You had to, you, you had to make your, uh, your way up through the ranks. This is for the individuals that when they look at their past and wonder, God wants to rescue us from our past. Yes, can, can I suggest to you that some of the past of the people that we're ministering to, the children that we're trying to lead, that for whatever reason he was a shepherd and David had been put into some dirty and dangerous situations because being a shepherd there means that you are, you are exposed 
by yourself. And the Bible says he came upon bears. Oh yeah. And he came upon lions. And he defended the sheep. He, 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 he earned his merit bags of courage by himself while he was a young man. And many times, many times, we look at people and we look at their behavior and we say, what's wrong with them? But the more excellent question is, might be what happened to them that now they act the way they act because something in their past. Yes, children are naturally happy. Children are naturally outgoing. Children are naturally bouncing. Children are naturally inquisitive. And when they become withdrawn, and when they become melancholy, when they become sad, it's usually because something has touched them in a negative way. Yes. Oh, y'all don't want to hear this today. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right here with you. He was put in a dangerous, dirty situation, and, 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 and he was the one, the scrappy kid, that had to pick up after everybody else. He had to do all of the dirty jobs. He was not considered part of the in crowd. He even wasn't dignified. But guess what? This, his past did not disqualify him. From being what God will call him to be. I said, man, I suggest to you that your past does not disqualify you from whatever God is calling you to be. To every believer, to every Christian, God is calling them to a very anointing. He's calling them to step in the ring and to let the anointing flow. Don't let your past keep you from your present because God is saying he can rescue you. Amen. 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 You have not been forgotten. You are not hopeless. Though you've been broken, your innocence stolen. He said, I hear you whisper underneath your breath for those individuals that want significant in Christ, that see themselves as being more than what they are. You should trust them in their behold in Christ. You are a new creature. All right, all right. Oh, thank God. Pass away. Pass away. Wow. And if I tell you that God doesn't make any count. The world he took you through the past is getting you ready for your anointing, is getting you ready for the next stage of your life. And you have to go through something to work with God. Yes, yes, God cannot use anyone that hasn't been broken. Come on, God can't use anybody that hasn't been through anything. Oh, let's shout out two or three. You, you never had any problems. You know, you, you done everything right. You never had any issues. But I need somebody who's been on the rough side of the mountain. Yes. I need somebody that is heartless. I need somebody that's been through something. Because when I'm going through something, I, I need a little bit more than the scripture. I need, I need a little bit more than a song. I don't need a, I don't need a pet answer. I need someone who's been on their face before God. Someone who's tears and warm on their street. Somebody who knows what it is to come out of the darkness into the mind. Yeah. God looks at your past and only does he rescue you from your past, he'll rescue you from your presence. Guess what? Guess what? They can't start without you. Come on, come on. They started, they started the meeting, and they and they wasn't there, and guess what? They can't do anything until God gets ready in his own time. That's right. Amen. Now I suggest to you you don't even have to be able to meet for God to call your name. Come on. Now I suggest to you you don't even have to be able to meet him. You don't even have to be thought of. Church under Pastor Gerald, who, who, who leads Antioch Missionary Baptist Church in Chicago, Illinois. One day, Pastor Drew turned to me and said, Joseph, I didn't know that the Lord called me to be a pastor. I think he sent you. And I said, No, Pastor, I'm, I'm not sent to be a pastor. He said, I know, but I'm not insecure in my position. And I'm telling you, God is getting you ready. Many times in ministry, we have to be careful that we don't recognize that there are other people around us who are anointed and who have an ability just like us. And again, one of the things that I love about our, 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 our ministry, our being the best going high, our, our father in ministry, that's Karen Gilly, who sleeps the great sleep. 
He gave us opportunity and occasion to experience Amen. and show our gifts. We, we need to give people the opportunity to stir up the gift that is in them, and we need to invite them on the stage. Many times, he would go to law churches with five, six, seven hundred members, and he would sit there, and he would just look at one of us and pray, and he would allow, allow us the opportunity to share our gift. Again, in that sin, in that circumstance, the God is saying to you that even in your presence, that you may be in a situation that you don't particularly care for, He still knows your name. He still knows where you are. He still knows what you're going through. And guess what? Your anointing is for you. And that's all I'm aware of. I'm asking you. Your turn is coming. Did you know that in the text, David's name is not mentioned one time except for after the anointing flow? God, I'm grabbing the yes, David's name is not mentioned until the anointing flows. His brother's name is mentioned. His father's name is mentioned. Yeah. His three brothers' names are mentioned, but David it just says he. Yeah. He's out there. He's ready. Yeah. 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 He's ready. He's ready. He looks okay. But guess what? The oil and the anointing that God has for you is for you. And the indictment I see in the text is on us as church leaders. We've got to invest some time in the next generation of anointing. We've got to get these young people ready because they are not just the church of tomorrow. They are the church of the day. And we see a lot of time trying to reach us. People are all age, but if you be honest, that 70% of the world population is under 50, and 3% is under the age of 30. And so, what are we doing to reach the young people and the children for Jesus Christ? Yeah. Yeah. Or oh, oh, the indictment during this pandemic, the churches have gotten together. We have done what we need to do for us, but how we address the concerns and the anointing of these children who are walking who are in, in this thing with us. And we don't know how this is affecting them. We need to take some time and hear what they're saying. Because this present situation it is a situation we, we, we can be shielded from certain things. Mama said, Boy, get behind me. They say, yo, watch that. Don't worry about that. But, but there, there's information everywhere. It, on the phone, on the television, on the internet. And we've got to understand that these children in this present age are being, are being uh, oppressed by demonic forces. And we've got to claim them. We've got to plead on them the blood of Jesus. We've got to anoint them. We've got to plead the blood for them. We've got to teach them in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. There needs to be some time. time. There needs to be some effort. There needs to be some yes, money. Yes, there needs sir. to be some strategies that are put together to deal with what the children are going through because it's a different day than when we came up. The church has a bigger role. The church has a bigger part to play in the rescue of the children for calling them out of darkness into the marvelous light. The set a standard to tell them what is good and what is perfect and what is pleasing to God. David, although he was not a, invited to the meeting, he still knew how to praise God. Yes, he did. That's That's what right. he was doing, David wrote 73 mm -hmm. of the 150 songs. Wow. And if you don't look through the ones he wrote, mm -hmm. the songs he wrote mm -hmm. coincide with what was happening in his life. Wow. Psalms 39 dealt with him being anointed king. Yeah. Right. Psalms 19 and 8 dealt with him calling Saul. Right. Psalms 9 dealt with him killing the lot. So I have to be, David had a prayer term. Yeah. 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 And every time God delivered him from something, he broke down with the Lord. Yeah. 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 So I have to be that, 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 that David began to document in his life all the time that God and in the being in the life of David, you know, you can go back and say, hold on, I've been through the storm, I've been through the rain, I already know I fought the lot, I fought the giant. He's already been my shepherd. He brought me up out of a horrible pit. He said, oh, come on, y'all not grabbing with me. When you have experience with God along the way, and you begin to tell people what the Lord has done for you, it changes their reality. Because whatever you are in today is not in it. Because when you look back,
situation. And guess what? When he was called, he was ready. He, he was ready. Some of us are called and we're not ready. And nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that because God not just rescues you from your past and your present, but God can rescue you because he knows that there's a point of preparation that you have to have. Guess what? The anointing flowed on David to be king. Yes. But his next assignment was to go back where he came from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I yeah. The devil be for the person who starts preaching one day want to be a bishop the next. The devil be for the person who just got there and has not went through any orthodoxy, has not went through any training, has not went through any preparation. That there is a, there is a period of time that you have to go through that you get ready for what God is doing for you. But he said that David was anointed at maybe 15, 16 years. You know, it took him another 12 years to be able to drive the river, but not until he was 40, was he over the whole thing. It took him some, some years of preparation to get ready. It took him 24 years to get ready to do what God was doing with him. May I suggest to you, you can be anointed that your appointment is yet not. Your appointment is for a future day. Just because the anointing is on you, don't mean you don't have to go through what you have to go through. Sometimes you need to understand it's not your time yet. Because the time is set is to under the air, it's the death, it's the beauty and the passion. So you can learn how to be. Yes, yes. Lord, yes. Yes. that with me. Yes, sir. He couldn't understand how to be a king, so God had to put it in the palace. But the way that don't mean because in the palace, but don't mean you're in a good spot. All right. And so when we look at the text, we look at what God was doing. God put the spirit of God was put upon David that he might be able to do the things he made to do. That's the only wrong. We cannot do the work of God without the Spirit of God. We cannot do this great work that we've been called to do, the work to deposit in these children to help them. You have gifts, you have abilities, young people, but you need to lean and depend upon the Spirit of God. It is a process. This, this process takes time. This is process. It takes time with God. It, it takes time in prayer. It takes time in the Word of God. It takes time in praise and worship. It takes time you working on your gifts. And your ability, every person that God saves, He gives them a spiritual gift that can be used for the edification of the church and the glory of God. But you got to stir up the gift that is within you. You got to work on it. What God has given you because God knows your name. He looks at you. He sees where you are. He sees what you're going through. And He knows that I have a place and a plan for what you're going through. I, I never shall forget. Coming up as a boy, I wanted, I wanted to play basketball. I know, I yes, I did. Matter of fact, the basketball court was in my backyard. I know, I know. And, 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 and guess what? I couldn't play basketball on the court in my own backyard. Because I had an older brother who was five years older than me. And all of his friends were older. And they would play basketball from sunup to sundown. And when I said I wanted to play, they tell me I was too little. And I said I wanted to play anyhow. And they would take the sweat off their face and throw it on me and say, you too little to play basketball. Y'all not traveling with me. I, I, I want to let you know that some good basketball players came out of our neighborhood. And, and they, they played in my backyard. But I wasn't able to play. And at one time, after they put that sweat on me, I kicked him and I ran and I found out that they couldn't catch me. So later on, later on, when, when I was in junior high, I made a decision that I wanted to go out for the track team and they put me on, they put me on the fence. They told me we needed a mile. We're gonna, we gonna let you run a mile. And I said, now nah, this is not gonna work after a couple of days. On there, I said, I wanted to run the quarter. I said, no, we need a mile. I said, I got to run the quarter. I said, no, you need to run the mile. So I best point a mile to took off. I let it get about 10, 15 feet. And I said, let me just go and, and catch him. I, I went and caught him, and I, and, I, and, I, and I went around. And they were timing him, but they timed me. 
And they said, okay, you can be over the floor of mine. I'm just saying something to you. That sometimes you just got to get out of your comfort zone. So sometimes you got to do something that, 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 that is unorthodox. Sometimes you've got to show up and, and show up and let God do what only God can do. Can I tell you, tell hey, you what's going on with David? Then God is working on David through his circumstances. God's spirit is working on him, preparing him to be what he needed to be because God rescued David because David was going to be a man who rescued other people. See, when Saul got in trouble and that everybody had problems with Saul, the Bible said everybody that had a problem with Saul came to David and then all of the all, all the men that, that were broken, that were messed up, that were confused, they came to David in the wilderness and David became their leader. He reason why he became their leader. He understood where God and guess what? There's nothing wrong when God is watching you do something. You ought to be able to tell somebody. I can't tell you what to do, but I can tell you what God has done for me. There's somebody here today in the fire who can do the test. That's why they have a testimony. There's somebody here that knows what God can do. God is bringing people in your life. He's bringing them to tell you in your life the truth for you to tell them that God will bless you. When he sees where you are, he knows what you're going through. He's been through what you've been through. Let him tell you, God, he's not through. Bless you. You've been waiting. The God is not through. Bless him. He sees where you are. He sees what you're going through. And he's saying, if you see me, God will bless you.